good night. Uh, we are in Paris with a new set of talk. And Benjamin will present the talk tonight. So enjoy the evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, and welcome to our two guests, Hanja and uh, Francois. Um, I will maybe say a few things Jean-Francois already said, so you kind of ruined my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so for four weeks now, uh, the students from Thai Paris uh, try to brought uh, their ideas to, to life in a, in a way. So Thai Paris is about type design, drawing letters, but type design is nothing without graphic design. So the two disciplines are really interwining and okay. <laughs> and, and tonight we'll have the perfect example of good design, whether it's type or graphic design, and the way everything overlaps and we'll see ideas brought to life. So our first guest tonight is Hanja. Uh, you're from the Netherlands. Um, you run your own studio since 2003. You, your work is characterized uh, by the use of pattern, colorfully mixed with type, uh, almost in some psychedelic way sometimes. <laughs> and it's full of optical illusions and really playful. Since 2017, you are the head designer of the Lowland Festival, a cultural and uh, artistic event in the north of uh, the Netherlands, and you even received a prize for that, for this uh, festival, for the design, just last month, so congrats. Last week, last week. wow, congrats. And uh, so you published your first font last year through Tipotech. So please uh, make a warm welcome for Hanja. Hello, thank you for all being here when it's so hot. <laughs> um, I think it's really funny that I'm here in this event where it's all about the, the hardcore type design because I used to be in an art school uh, where hardcore type design was uh, the essential part of the education and I ran away really, really fast um, to, to go to another art school and to discover that uh, I really like type. Uh, but I would never call myself a type designer. Um, I'm going to show you uh, about 200, 200 slides. It's probably way too much. Uh, I always have the urge to make things complete and to tell the entire story. Uh, and also, I'm a bit of a collector. Um, this is my studio. I'm uh, located in Amsterdam. That's also where I studied. Uh, this is my wall where I put the posters or the sketches or the rejections. Um, but this is actually how my studio looks. It's not so fancy and glamorous. Uh, it's more of a laboratory, a little attic uh, with a, a pen plotter uh, on the right and uh, some laser cut work and some book binding machines and coffee. And um, So this is my uh, universe. Um, this is the universe of my father. It is, I think this picture is around 1983. Uh, I'm the one on the left, and uh, the one on the right is my childhood best friend. And uh, this is my father's studio, and he's an artist. He makes drawings. Um, and uh, my childhood friend is one year older than I am, and she could already write, and I did not know how to write. So I r actually remember sitting there copying her letters and uh, asking her, like, is this, is this one okay? Can you read it? Uh, and actually, that's what I still do. I still copy letters and wonder if people can read it. Uh, this is my father's work, and over the years, I start to realize that uh, more and more, my work starts to look like his. Not maybe on a literal sense, but the fact that he wants to fill the entire page is something that I also love to do. Um, and I, I, I love the way that how he uses his lines and that's something that probably uh, embedded in my brain and became very natural for me to also work with lines. On the other hand, oops, that was on the left you see my mother in her younger years and she uh, works in fashion and this is, uh, she's worked for uh, the, the Dutch opera. 
and it's not so much a sense of fashion th that she told me, but more about the, f the fact that fabric has a texture, and she would teach me how to shop, not using my eyes, but just to touch the clothing and just stop if it's not, if it feels good. Um, so I think the lines and the sense of texture is really what uh, are some essential parts of me. Uh, I became a book designer after school. That's something that I, I really enjoy doing. Um, but also, uh, on the one hand, it's the very practical sense, like somebody needs a book, so you make it, and uh, there's a deadline. Uh, that, that's like all these boundaries I really like. Um, but also the fact that you really make an object in the end. But also, I was a little bit bored in between the waiting for the client to give the, the feedback or the, the content. So I would start a hobby with drawing, um, and then I thought, I don't know what to draw, I'll just draw a letter. And that became a huge archive of unused material, um, which uh, on a later phase I realized that I could use this material to make posters for uh, an, uh, uh, my own initiative. Um, but I'm going to take you back to 2002, that was the year that uh, my graduation started. And um, when I was in school, uh, I did, like when I grew up there was always a computer, but not in my, live, not in my house. And um, so the, the I really started to work with a computer when um, my school started, my art school. And for me this computer was a dictator of making things straight and not being able to, to make it work the, the way I wanted to work. So the first thing I had was a scanner so I could make a drawing and scan it inside the computer. The second step was a digital photo camera which also made, m made it possible to put material inside the computer. But when a, a nerdy roommate of mine said, hey, did you ever try the, the tablet to, to work with a pen? Uh, that was completely new. I, I knew one guy who, ha who used it, but we always thought he was crazy. And uh, the, the evening that I used this pen, I thought, wow, finally my hand is inside the computer and the computer does exactly what I want. Um, the thing I did was uh, I had a piece of text, I made it into outlines, and I just scratched the insides of the letter. And it was not to make a type design or to, to think of any kind of design, it was just to test a tool. How does it work? To be curious. And because I did it in uh, Illustrator, so it was vector, I could pick up all the different A's and, and look at them and think, hey, they're similar when, you're, when they're small, but if you look at them large, they're very different characters. And for me that was uh, something that surprised me. And what also surprised me is when I piled up 50 different drawings of the A on top of each other and thinking, hey, but like in definition, they're kind of the same letter. Uh, 100 different drawings of an A, 150 and 200. And for me, that became a, a, like a, a way of thinking about type that it was not about light, medium or bold. At that time, that was a new thought. Now when we have variable fonts, um, that is not so uh, surprising anymore. Uh, I went to my type uh, type design teacher Gerard Unger, who's a very well-known Dutch type designer, and told him, like, sorry, I did something with letters that's probably not allowed. I copied them. Uh, is it, like, am I allowed to do this? And he said, please continue. I, I think this is quite exciting what you're doing. This is one of the, the things I did with the, the scratch letter, as I called it in the end. And here I was mainly surprised by the fact that if you zoom in on a letter, you could see more and more detail, and if you zoom out, it just becomes a black uh, dot. Um, I, I didn't use the letter except for showing it in my graduation project. It was shown in, catalog, in uh, an art catalog. Um, but when I googled my name, I found this book saying type design Hansje van Halem, and I thought, I did not know this book exists. Um, turns out that I, a year before I had borrowed my illustrator file with letters to uh, somebody who wanted to make a test drive uh, and forgot to say that he actually wanted to buy the letter. And um, for me it was such a shock to see my letter, my type, uh, being used by somebody else and it looked 100% as if it was my design. So for me this, this item was the reason that I decided never ever to share my letters with anyone. That if people want to use my letters they should come to me and I'll design it for them. Or, um, so that was my, my goal as a designer, to, to keep my tool for myself. Um, that also had... The f uh, 
Well, what happened from there is that I did not have to have the responsibility anymore to finish typefaces, to make it uh, usable for other people. So most of my letters are just an, an, uh, an illustrator file or sometimes a, an incomplete illustrator file with somewhere in the, in the margin the, the recipe on how I made it. Um, so these are just some sketches that I would start in between deadlines and then at a certain point a commission would come in and I thought, hmm, I was already enjoying myself making this letter. Why don't I just finish it for this commission project? So that's how my practice from being a book designer shifted more towards uh, being more the, yeah, well, more illustrating type. Um, this is another sample that I made in between uh, another project and it was actually a sketch during uh, designing the stamps for the Netherlands. I think these stamps were printed like 80 million times, which for Dutch measures, that's quite a lot. Um, here, I tried to make uh, a dedication to Jan van Krimpen, who's uh, a type designer from the, uh, the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, I think that he made the most beautiful uh, stamps of the Netherlands ever, and I, I used his uh, Spectrum typeface uh, for these stamps and a little while later I was invited to do a second series connected to the first and here I, my, my self-criticism was that the shape of the letter was really on top of the pattern and I thought it was a bit easy and here I made it a bit more complicated to have the letter uh, have a zigzag line around the letter and then have the pattern uh, evolve from there so I thought that made more sense this is also, a, a I'm just showing you to, to make the story run. Uh, this is a sketch that I made uh, on how uh, branches grow. And uh, I think I've proposed it for 11 times for different projects and it always gets rejected. But still, somewhere in the back of my mind, every time a project comes along, uh, I'm thinking, maybe this is the, the t the my chance. Um, but maybe it's just really bad design. This is some small printed matter, an uh, invitation for an artist run space some contribution to a book. And this is a sketch that I found, this was, I think this was the first time I was not using Adobe software, but I was using some skinning uh, software where the, um, uh, the pressure, the speed, and the direction of drawing was measured and it was calculated into uh, a texture. And also I managed to make a poster out of it and zoomed in, it looks like this. I still don't know if this is a, like, is it a design that I can really say, oh, I designed it, or is it really nice software that I found? I, I have no clue. Um, uh, there was this one time I was in a museum in Brussels, and I saw this sample of uh, a lace, uh, and I thought, oh, that felt like a very big freedom of just making these uh, decorative shapes, and also ha like the alphabet is really embedded into a, into a background grid. Then I closed the book, went home, and for the first time decided to use uh, fine liners instead of working with the, um, the digital pen. Uh, and I started to draw lace-like alphabets, which is a skeleton, uh, the maximum X height, and um, s started drawing. And I also scanned in the in-between versions of letters so th that I would have a light and a bold. And because uh, it is a typeface, or like a, it's more an al it's not a typeface, it's an alphabet. And um, uh, because it's a handmade alphabet, I thought it would be really stupid if you would have the same O on the same poster twice, so that you could see that it was actually a copy. So I made a lot of different variations for each letter. So here's the variations for the O. And this is a sample I made as a gift to people visiting my studio. And this is a zoom in of a poster where I thought, oh, I like to make these circles, so I'll also do the entire surrounding hours and hours of y maybe useless work, I don't know. But this lace drawing really became an obsession. I thought uh, it was this nostalgic feeling of wanting to be there and just drawing and thinking of this romantic lace. Um, and I started drawing bigger, uh, bigger things and also computer manipulating it into uh, a pa more patterns. And at a certain point I thought, I have to stop myself because this is nostalgia and not really uh, the right design thing to design for the rest of my life. So I, I enrolled in a bobbin lace course w uh, with the ladies from the church um, and they taught me how to do the bobbin lace. I thought 
I do it for three years and then I'll be able to make my own big lace made posters. Uh, this is homework from the teacher. It is in real, it's this big. And here you see it on the left. It took me 40 hours to make. I think it's the most complicated thing I've ever done. On the right, you see what I can do on my own without the help of the teacher. And that was really a realization of maybe this is not really a, a good technique for, uh, for me to follow, so I quit. Although I like the experiments. Um, in 2000, and I think it was eight, uh, I had moved my studio into my uh, house and uh, the crisis was the, 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 the economic crisis in the Netherlands was hitting us, so people lost faith in, uh, in being self-employed. And, and um, uh, I was sitting in my house, I had no more as, uh, assignments, but I did have a little bit of, s of money and I had an intern. And I thought, oh, I have energy, what should I do? And a friend of mine said, hey, your cabinet in your living room is very beautiful, but you made a mess out of it. Maybe you should ask other people to rearrange it. And that's what I did. I asked um, my graphic design friends, hey, do you want to put your portfolio into the cabinet? We invite some people, we sell some beers, and uh, have, a, have a party. Uh, this is uh, the cabinet by Job Wouters, uh, who I was in class with. He's a, I think, yeah, type, type draw, he, he draws type. Uh, Michiel Schuurman, who's also my best friend, he's a great poster and pattern maker. Uh, Victor Hachman, an illustrator. Nice and de Vries. I think I had about I had nine exhibitions. About 1,500 people visited my living room. At the end, uh, I, I still have to redo the floor. And I'm kind of lazy if it comes to my house. Um, and at a certain point, I was sitting on the side of my bed with like a dinner dinner plate and a little TV in front of me, and I thought, I need my house back. And that realization also meant that um, the gallery started to make less and less sense and I stopped the gallery, found um, like this is m used to be my house. It's now, I still live there but it doesn't look so, so new anymore. Um, but the, ni the nice part about uh, doing this gallery is that for the first time I really had a purpose because I had something to com communicate. I wanted to have people come over to my house and um, show them the, um, uh, the exhibition. So uh, I started to uh, screen print uh, announcement posters. And I made, these are all the posters I made, which in real have much nicer colors. And um, this was the first time that I was able to uh, use my type experiments, use them for uh, a com communication. So I was, uh, I think, printing about 60 and I would cycle around Amsterdam and hang them in the, uh, in the cafes. Um, and the nice thing was there was no client saying that it was ugly or that it did not communicate or that uh, it was not legible or did not show an image of the, of the um, person who was in the exhibition. And uh, in, in this way, I could really create my own universe. Uh, I realized I started to become obsessed with having a background and legibility in the same layer. So not having type on top of a, a pattern. Um, and it was super nice to it really changed my assignments because this was the first time I, I started to experiment with colors, with different texture papers. And uh, this is the uh, uh, sketch. This is the two separate layers printed. And these are the, is a finished poster. Uh, after a while, I, well, as I told before, I, I gave up my gallery, but I enjoyed doing the poster so much that I offered my poster service to a like-minded gallery uh, somewhere else in the Netherlands, and I continued the poster series uh, as if it was my own. It was a client that uh, paid for the printing costs, did not see the design before it was printed, and um, it was super nice to do. Also for them I made a, a nice large series, and after a while I did not have time to do the screen printing myself, so I switched to doing Rizo print, so the posters got bigger. It was not about doing uh, the combination of colored paper uh, with um, opaque ink, but now it was white paper and only four colors of ink. And I think that also all these technical aspects really changed the design because you're, you're trying to figure out how it works, why it works, the way it works, and how to make use of the, um, the impossibilities of the, the technique. So this one I really like because from up close, it's just lines. And from far away, it's type. At least that's what I think. Can you read it? There's another one, so this is just a, 
field of lines, and I manipulate the lines into uh, legibility and using overlapping colors. And this one is an experiment using the, um, the Apple Pencil for the first time. So this is the series. Um, to show you a little bit of my design process, because it's not that I think of a design, sit down and make it. Uh, I open a blank screen, I have no clue what to do. I type in the, the content in a kind of neutral letter, and from there on uh, I just start to make experiments. And there's a lot of failure involved, and there's a lot of ugliness involved, and uh, this is a design process for a cover of a magazine, and I think the, this is the exceptional case that I had five full days of design time, which usually is not really the case. And here I just experiment until I think that something exceptional is happening. Usually I save in between phases also, that I think, oh, this is a nice idea, but I'm not going to use it maybe some other time. So this, this way of working also generates a whole new archive of possibilities for future projects. And sometimes on the screen it looks really nice and I print it on at 100% and it looks really ugly. You can read it too clearly, which I don't like, or you can not, not read it at all, and that's something the client doesn't like. Uh, so I always try to find this balance where there's this optical illusion that you think you see a letter and it, you're not sure it's there. Well, this is the end result, a uh, cover of a, a magazine. And from up close, it's just some lines. I like that. A um, couple of years ago, I was asked to do a type treatment for a, lo uh, for a logo. This is a logo for a uh, literary magazine that's been there since 1870 or something. I had made it, and I had an intern who was a bit more clever than I was, so he made this l letter come to life. And this was the first time that that happened to me. It was like, wow, <laughs> it breathes. Um, of course, what happens with interns is that after, after a while they leave, uh, and at that time, I started to get emails with people, hey, can you make a moving logo for me? So I started to bluff and think, oh, I'll manage, it can't be that hard. And um, I had to reject uh, a couple of projects. This is a project which is not so visible, but it will be visible. Um, one of those clients who said, make a moving logo, after a lot of failures, I told them, I cannot make a moving logo. Here's the assignment, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to quit this project. And they said, well, we want your design anyway, so we'll make something static. It was Plus Design Gallery, and I thought, why don't I make, I probably see it better here. Um, I make a letter in one direction and a letter in a different direction and layer them on top of each other. One plus one made kind of sense at the time. Uh, I made it into four directions and then you can combine them in different variations and get all these different angles of type. And because I, I was supposed to have a long running relationship with this client, I thought, okay, secretly I'm just gonna make the entire alphabet, all the, uh, all the signs. And then the client never came back to me. So I had this uh, type uh, in my computer not being used for anything. So I started to use it for small projects. This is a, an invitation for a gallery. This is a, a gift for a friend who just had a baby. Um, and then when Peter Bilak from Tipotek saw a presentation of mine where I showed this particular image, he, s he came, contacted me and said, well, if you were already about to give the, uh, the typeface to a client, why don't we uh, make it into a, a typeface, a working typeface for Tipotek and see what happens if other people use your work. Uh, I did not finish all these letters myself. I just uh, explained them the, the system on how I worked on it because the work I do is usually very systematic, very much about counting. And they made all these uh, letters. So it's kind of not my type design, it's my type design system in a way. I thought that was very luxurious <laughs> to not do it all myself. Um, and then uh, here on, the, on their website, you can try out how that works for you using different colors, using different directions.
but also uh, Peter Bilak surprised me with uh, making it into a variable font, which I had heard, f well, it was new at the time. So it was this was launched in November and it was uh, launched a couple of days b after the latest uh, uh, Adobe uh, software was released where you could actually use a variable fonts. So this was super nice to have this tool being upgraded into something that I always had to in, in the way that I design, I always have a lot of options and I have to freeze it at some points. And with variable fonts, I don't have to freeze it. It's, it's all implemented. So now you have all these nice things that you can do with it. Okay, um, back to the book design because it, it is, has been a big part of my profession and in some way it still is. Uh, as I told, I really like the, the, the making the whole object, um, start to experiment more with the, the material and the color, and uh, even do this very fancy 10 print runs of foil. Uh, on the left one is even one where there's this, the experience I have from screen printing used on covers for books. Uh, I started to collaborate with the people that I uh, invited into my gallery. Um, but also for book design, I found this little island of where nobody really cares what happens, and that's the end paper, so the first two uh, pages from the book, uh, and sort of making patterns. Um, it always looks like very finished when it's done, but it's al also like three days of non-stop making ugly failed patterns or computer crashes because it's too, uh, too complex to calculate. Um, but I, I really enjoy doing this, and I, I have a, a deal with the printer that I design the, um, the patterns for free, and he gives me a stack of uh, printed paper. So I have like all this. As a, as a kid, I would be in love with office supplies, and now I make my own. So that's like a dream come true. Um, but at, at this moment, I'm not being asked for the book design, but only for the end papers. So people say, well, pff, whatever, give the end paper, we'll do the book ourselves. Um, so that's that's very nice. With the, um, with the end papers, or the patterns that I make, um, I was showing them around, I, I use them as uh, office paper, I wrap gifts, I make booklets out of it. Uh, and, and that way there was a group of architects who thought, well, if you can make this pattern, why don't you do it super big for our building? And that's really uh, compliments to the, to the creative client because I could have never thought that that would be one of the possibilities with my work. This is a, a perforation design. It was water cut, so every hole is identical. And um, I was a bit in shock because of the scale, like it was on my computer screen and then suddenly it was super large holes and thought, oh, oh, that's going to be way too big. But I think it looks super nice on the building. It's the, the, the windows are, it's sliding, sliding doors for the windows to filter the sunlight. And what I like about it is that the texture of the, of the steel is completely changed. It's um, and if you have one architecture pro uh, project, then it's not so hard for clients to think that you can also do the second one. This, uh, the square I designed for a church, uh, also in the Netherlands, the, um, the path in the middle is a historical path from 1899. Here you can see it from above. And this was a process of only six weeks, like the, the moment that I got the assignment and the moment that it was actually finished. So it's a mosaic. And I think it's nice because the church already is very beautiful by itself and to, to get an assignment to put something modern into this old fashioned church uh, is very uh, exciting to do. Uh, this is a project that I did for um, an old Jewish area in the Netherlands. It was um, an assignment to, to design an entire poem of uh, 60 lines into the, um, into the street. And um, after a very long process, this is the design that I thought, this is interesting, because it, we thought of making a fence, and I thought, okay, every line is a baluster, and uh, if I just change the shape of the balusters, then from a, from a distance you'll be able to read something, and from up close it will just be ornaments. So that reminded me of these kind of staircases. So we made uh, this I think it's a 400 meters fence, it's about six minutes walk, so all, all the way through the fence. Um, we did the, 
laser cut the design and then it was painted and put um, put in the street and it's super close to my studio so I cycle past it every now and then it's a pity that it gets dirty but it, it's not demolished yet so uh, but it's super nice this is a couple of years ago I fell in love with my current boyfriend his name is Willem and I went to my studio and I thought oh, Willem uh, <laughs> and um, uh, and I, I did could, I couldn't care about working on assignments, so I just decided to make a W for him. I would never start a, uh, an alphabet or a system with a W. Um, and these are the, um, the shapes I made. I think this is the final W that was for him. And of course, uh, being uh, a designer, but also like business-minded, when uh, a commission for a magazine cover came in, I thought, oh, that was an interesting system. Let's apply it to, the, to this design. Um, and there already the first surprise came because the system that I used for the W was very um, symmetrical. But when I use it on non-symmetrical shapes, the system of, I think the rule is if a line c hits the, um, if a line hits the outline, then it turns, uh, it turns inwards and then connects to the first line it comes across and makes everything in between black. Um, and I, I really like this irregularity that was really a surprise, like a Q, the Q for instance, I could never imagine making a Q looking like that, but it was just a system telling me this is how it's supposed to be done. So I like that. Um, and uh, I did quite a few projects with this type system. At a certain point, uh, I was approached by uh, Lowlands. It's a music festival in the Netherlands. Uh, I remember being 13 years old uh, and that Lowlands was on the radio and I would sit with a cassette desk taping the concerts. Uh, so it and I, I, I went there a couple of times as a teenager and in my 20s I also went there. So for me it was this very well-known big brand coming to me and um, I thought they wanted maybe a flag or something and then they said, well, we want you to do the entire identity, which was a surprise because they only had one designer in the 24 years before. So they're very loyal to their, de uh, to their designers. I think this, yeah, th these are some... Well the thing is that usually a, a big brand would have a pitch or something and they just decided uh, we want to work with this designer. And we did a test run for two days. I designed for them. Uh, to just show them how I would approach an assignment like this. It was not supposed to be uh, a final design, um, but just a way of taste or something. So these are, here are just some samples of things that I had designed. And I was mainly thinking of, okay, I'm going to design for a festival. I cannot make it too complicated because I'm not able to reproduce it like for every uh, advertisement or every uh, s small thing. This was one of the sketches I made, and I told them, let's not fall for this one, because it, this one cost me four hours to draw. Um, I also showed this uh, uh, series of sketches to a programmer uh, called Joost van Rossum. He's a programmer and a type designer. And, um, and especially for this sketch, he said, okay, how did you make it? So he was asking me all my rules, so every step I make in my head. And he said, hmm, I think I, I think I can do something for you. And he used um, Python in Drawbot. And Drawbot is a, an educational uh, programming, pro yeah, programming program, is that the word? Um, uh, and uh, and this, is, this is my current design environment. He made a very elaborate uh, master script, and I just work with the parameters of that script. And... Um, if I hit run, then I get images like this. And for me, this saves me three hours of work, which is really amazing. Uh, to explain a little bit about the system, my rule is that the inside of the letter becomes, in this case, uh, horizontal lines, the outside of the letter becomes vertical lines, and where they, uh, where they, where they intersect, uh, they get combined. So here we have the letter. Here we have the letter translated into the system. And because it's parameters, you can also animate the parameters. So we can make variations on the stroke width. And the stroke height. And for me, this is magic. 
well, I'm a, after two years, I'm a little bit used to it. Uh, we could play with the curves. And the position. And what I really like about this position is this, that it's not like a static image that moves left to right. But if the, the, image, the, the letter that goes behind the grid, um, all the connections are recalculated. So I think that's, that gives it like a bit of a clumsy look, but I, I like that it's so, co yeah, that it makes sense. We can also play with the grid size. So here we've changed the grid height. And here are some samples of different variations that come out of the same uh, system. Uh, so I thought, well, we're finished. We have uh, a system, we have a machine to, um, to make it fast, uh, we can animate it, and then the, the real life started, and the real life was that it had to fit on Instagram. And if you scale this for Instagram, you get blurry letters. It's just no, not pretty. So all throughout the year, we had to make um, solutions for the problem we created ourselves. One of the solutions was that we made a static font, um, an open typeface for a little bit bigger use and a solid typeface for smaller use. And that's easy because also people from the festival can easily use it. Um, for animations we... Well, this is an animation we made that I still think is very intriguing. This is all coded. Uh, and after a while, I thought, oh, I'm, uh, I can also put in vector images. And I started to make shapes move. And I thought, hmm, interesting. And then I think even in Keynote, I would like place the, the, the clip and then flip the clip like this. I thought, oh, that starts to look like patterns. So I also I went back to, the, to Just van Rossum and said, hey, can, can you do something that we can make this easy? So he adapted the script. And then we had a new set of uh, options. So we could make stuff like this. And then uh, I think we started the festival thinking, okay, everything is going to be black and white. And then the first question that comes is, can you make 15 different stickers? You can only use one color and we have to be able to identify them from a distance. So there goes your black and white world. Um, so we started to use color a little, little bit more, but it was always hard because it was lowering the contrast. We also made the draw body rendered uh, f uh, wristbands. Uh, the, the coins, the um, program posters, advertising. And the nice thing about this is that the client did not say, okay, if you make something in the beginning, it has to look like that in the end. We could just evolve throughout the festival, especially because it was the first year, so we did not know what problems we would encounter. Here are the t-shirts, which I think were very... And the signage. And the signage is the most visible at the, at the festival and it was the easiest to make because the whole identity was based upon making this large uh, type. And we even made a huge festival tent, which uh, is now the icon of the festival. So that's super nice to be so visible as a graphic designer <laughs> in, this, um, in this festival. And as backdrops for uh, acts, here they use the static font. Um, and that the everything I showed was for 2017, and now we're in 2018. Next month, the festival will take place. And it's like the three days where I can see what we did for the entire year. Um, but the goals for this year were to use colors in a better way than we did the, the first year. What I also realized is that I'm not such a good animator. And uh, I had seen the animations made by Jurian Hoss. So I asked him, like, can you do something with these set of rules and I actually gave him more or less free space. I think I only said do something kaleidoscopic and uh, something with two colors overlapping and making a third color. So he made these amazing animations for us, uh, which is a super nice collaboration. We even on the website, we have a script that runs the, like if the client goes and uh, put in a new act, uh, we have a script that runs a movie and that it gets placed on the, um, uh, on the website. So that's super nice, that it has some interaction also. And more, an more animation and patterns. And uh, this year I thought, okay, the first year was black and white, so this year 
Um, this year, I think every time there's a new, uh, new announcement, we make it into different colors. So we have these kind of Instagram uh, films. And uh, Facebook buttons and advertising. Well, just to mention the people that I work with, because this is the first time that it's not a me project, but it's an us project. Is myself, Jos van Rosen for programming, animation design, Yuri Jan Hos, and design assistant, Marjolein Rinkes, who's really putting a lot of uh, things to the table as well. Um, currently, I'm uh, well, it's, uh, actually at the printers. Uh, a book is called Theory of Type Design by Gerard Unger, who was also my teacher, uh, who I asked if I could copy letters or if it was wrong or not. Um, so I'm cu currently working on a, a very thick uh, book about type design. Um, and a little bit more about the patterns, because I think my time, oh, I have five minutes. 20 slides, five minutes, I can take it easy. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, the thing with the patterns is that uh, I don't get asked for book designs anymore, but I get asked for uh, doing the patterns. And this is a, a pattern that is reprinted every year. And it's uh, the printer, who's also a publisher, uh, every year he picks different colors and I have no idea what he's going to pick. And uh, every time he surprises me, and it's still the same design, just by mixing the, the layers. And um, I thought that was so nice. And at a certain point, well, the, the thing with patterns is that I don't like one pattern. I like the combination of a lot of patterns. Because I think, well, that's nice. And I got the opportunity to design uh, an installation for a museum. And I uh, figured that I would just paste every part of a wall in a different uh, wallpaper and it's actually just uh, the end paper is blown up to this size and it used to be the toilets of, of a university so there's a lot of small spaces so I had a lot of opportunity to make a lot of different tiny walls but because I like printed matters m more than uh, just like the, 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 the ink yet printed wallpaper. I asked the printer, like, hey, can we reprint all the patterns we have used together? And he saved all the printing plates over the years and he reprinted um, uh, my patterns in colors he picked. And at a certain point he called me and said, Hansje, maybe you should drop by because I think your book is almost, almost finished. Maybe you want to add something. So I, I took home like a big stack of uh, one-sided printed paper uh, and then I designed the back sides uh, with, well, with some type specimens. And these books, well, this one, I, I have it in and usually I would say, and it's for sale, but it's f at, at my address it's sold out. I think some bookshops still have it. It, ha it contains 28 Pantone colors, 11 different uh, paper types, types of paper. And um, yeah, it was super nice to, to work on this, but it's already my third publication. I, I tend to make books out of my f sketches and failures. Um, I think I'm almost there. Yes. Well, that was the exhibition. Um, what I'm currently doing is, um, well, tomorrow I'm going on a holiday for a month, which is very luxurious but very needed. Um, and when I get back, I'm going to finish a design for uh, the Kijker, for the entrance of a, a building. So I'm dreaming of doing tile design. Um, and uh, when I'm on holiday, it's being produced. I was working on the design of a three-dimensional door for a museum. Uh, this is the rejected design. But then the rejections always leave me with some nice patterns that I can make more elaborate in the end. And uh, that was my talk. So... <laughs> Is my is my is my chin blue now? No, it's okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any questions?
Hi. Ah. Okay, <laughs> nice. Um, it's very nice to see your your growing alive in the plant supports. And I would like to ask you if you think about uh, new supports again, the new medium, other medium, like uh, obviously we think about uh, textile also. Mm -hmm. What is your, uh, do you think about uh, new or like, new supports to use your yeah, well, the, the fact that it can be applied on anything I learned is that the, the fact that now I'm dreaming about making tiles. Of course, I would love to do something with textile. Um, uh, currently, they're making an embossed door out of my design, which I had never thought of. So I really like the technical aspect of uh, um, getting to know a new material and finding out what the technical boundaries are and then understand them and, and make them work for a design. Uh, is that your question? Did I answer your question? So you, you wait for, um, you At this moment, I, my, my assignments are so nice that I don't have to fantasize myself. The things that I want to do myself is like this is a very easy um, trick on the uh, After Effects, but to, to understand a little bit more about animation in such a way that I can collaborate better with people who can actually do it. So that's like a technical thing that I really want to, to learn. But for me, it's, it's always this technical challenge, if it's a digital challenge or a very materialist uh, challenge. So I, uh, I hope that uh, that keeps evolving. Thank you. Not working. Yes. Hi. Thank you for the talk. Oh, you? yeah. <laughs> um, the word system comes by a lot. Mm -hmm. But there's also this fluidity and there's this freedom. And I, I feel like there's a contradiction there. But it's, is it organized chaos or is it chaotic organization? Which one has your preference? I'm 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 actually completely not free in my work. It's it's all systems, but I try to have the system in such a way that it looks organic or it looks fluid. Um, but I would never just think, oh, maybe it's nice if I just make a swoosh here. It's it's all part of like a, a very systematic way of of working. But by yeah, applying a lot of different. Uh, techniques on top of each other. I always try to exceed whatever um, tool I've been using and, and make it look as if... Well, I, I think I'm happy that you say it looks fluent and it looks uh, random uh, because it's very systematical. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, good question. <laughs> um, for me f to, to be able to do this project, because Lowlands is 11 months a year, it starts in October and it finishes end of August, so it's only September that is no, no festival on my mind. And um, the fact that we work with him uh, now is so logical that I don't miss doing the things by hand, but I do miss uh, being able to create something new and when now I'm behind my computer and start to create something new I realize that it has changed me so much that you can automate a lot of things that I've, I'm very used to doing by hand that immediately I'm thinking hmm maybe I should talk to Just. so it, it did uh, it did change uh, my way of thinking and, and also it's a bit scary because Lowlands is my biggest client my other clients don't have the budget to hire uh, an extra person, so I feel that I'm, I became a little bit dependent on this luxury of um, working with these specialists. Okay. Your work is uh, <coughs> about to be at the limits, at the edge of eligibility. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So when you work on, on letter forms, on you add all your your own words with stripes and lines. Uh, when when you have to work with with the clients, always the client saying uh, you know make the logo bigger you know, or make it more legible or you have to be read by people. Mm-hmm. Or you are able to convince the clients that it's not necessary to be read as a normal letter form. So the effect of letter forms can be associated with you. You can make, make the text not completely legible, but it's still working very well. Or oh. you convince the clients to be able to accept that they are it's not very legible. I mean, the I, 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 I think my clients. Well, I, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant. My clients find find me, so they already see my website. They know the type of work I make. So usually it's the people that are ready up for experiment. Um, and I think in the end I do make legible uh, legible design. But the thing is that I take a risk, and the client client is willing to take that risk with me. Um, and it, it also attracts a type of assignments where it is not essential. Like it's not, I'm not making signs for fire exits. It's a, I make a poster, and if the poster is beautiful, that's pr- maybe the most important thing. And on the second level, it would be nice if we could read it. So, um, uh, but I do realize that a lot of designers have completely different uh, parameters to design by. That that legibility should be 100% guarantee, even when it's foggy outside and when it's raining. Um, and for me, I, I don't live in that world. I live in the world where I think the experiment can be number one. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful that I, that clients know how to find me, that I can c- continue on doing this type of design. So, but I know it's it's not the normal world. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. À peine 14 ans après sa création, l'iconique école de design du Bauhaus fut fermée par le régime nazi. De nombreux trésors et chefs-d'œuvre inachevés y furent abandonnés, cachés aux yeux du monde. Reposant sur l'idée de former une nouvelle génération d'artistes pour créer un monde meilleur, Le Bauhaus a jeté les bases du design moderne tel que nous le connaissons aujourd'hui, changeant à jamais la créativité. Dans l'Allemagne des années 1930, toutefois, les idées progressistes du Bauhaus étaient considérées comme une menace, rendant inéluctable la fermeture de l'école. Mais parfois, ce qui a été oublié avec le temps peut renaître à tout moment. de Bose est toujours aussi puissante. À partir de maintenant, vous pouvez créer avec un morceau d'histoire.